be praying for America, for the whole nation. Um, so if you haven't gotten your prayer guide, it's in the foyer. Uh, you can grab one, and it has 30 days of uh, prayer um, and different uh, things, subjects to pray for, uh, for the nation. It's the whole uh, Assemblies of God is going to be doing this, and so we uh, want to... Uh, uh, unite, unite ourselves to this. Amen. We want to pray for our nation. We want to pray for different uh, reasons that we need to pray for. But I was reading the few first ones. and, uh, and, and So we're going to be praying June 5th to July 4th. It's 30 days of prayer. And, and the first day we're going to be praying, that's June 5th, we're going to be praying for a great move of God. And uh, it says that an estimated 6% of Americans have a truly biblical worldview. Many Christians don't know how to carefully look at life through the biblical lens. In other words, uh, you have to look everything in this life through the lens of the Word of God. Amen. So if you... Uh, you think differently about things than the Word of God, uh, somebody is wrong, either you or God. And I, I'm going to tell you news, God is never, God is never wrong, so it's got to be us that have to change. Amen? Uh, so, uh, but that's concerning that only 6% of Americans really have this biblical worldview. Amen? And so we need a great move of God in our nation. And so with the young people, with uh, the children, with the adults and um, elderly people, all of us, we need a great outpouring. He said he would pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Amen. That means all races. That means all ages. Amen. He said upon your daughters, your sons and daughters and uh, f male and females, you know, it's everybody. Amen. So we need to be praying for that. And so uh, I, I was reading another one. Um, it says the next one, June 6th, we're going to be praying for spiritual awakening. In the United States, 41% of the population believes the Bible, the Koran, and the Book of Mormons all express the same divine truths. So in other words, for 41% of Americans, reading the Bible is the same as reading the Book of Mormon or the Koran. So that, could, that couldn't be right, right? <laughs> the Bible is the Word of God, and that's it. It's the only book that has passed the test of time. Amen. The only book that even scientists, I, I, I follow this scientist, uh, uh, I like, uh, they're called Reasons to Believe uh, with Hugh Ross. And uh, they, uh, they're scientists dedicated to prove that the Bible is, is inspired, you know, they're inspired by God and that the universe is designed and the designer and creator of the universe is God. And so all the new scientific discoveries prove more and more and more that the Bible had uh, predicted so many things about, uh, for example, recently, you know, not too long ago, less than 100 years ago, they, they discovered that the universe is expanding. But the Bible has said that, you know, that he stretches the heavens many many years ago so the bible has said many things scientifically that are are being proven by science uh recently and uh but it's been said by it's the only book uh really that uh talks about god like a, a transient god like he's above time and space and matter He's above all this, you know. Any other book, any other religious book talk, talks about God as he is like part of create inside time. He's limited by things. But the Bible is the only one that talks about God being above, but also included, included in creation and, and close to his creation. Amen. Uh, so, 
it's it, it, Bible is an, an amazing book, amen. And you need you and I. We need to read it and meditate it and make it part of um, of our life. So we're gonna let the children go to their class. Is that good? Uh, we're, you're gonna go with Pastor Carol. She's gonna take you. It's just next door, and we're gonna be praying for them while. And, and we welcome them. Yes. Thank you for being in our church. Amen. So we'll, we'll, let's pray for them and for our service. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the class that the children are going to receive, for the inspiration, for the love of the scripture and the love of the spirit that Pastor Carol is anointed to in, inspire in their lives. And in and, and, and our service, Father, we yield ourselves to you, and we want to uh, honor your presence, and we want to uh, express and manifest our hunger for uh, the truths of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right, so I'm still in my series of... Uh, Arm and Dangerous, this is part 11, so we are trying to finish this, uh, Armed and Dangerous. You are armed and dangerous, amen. In other words, uh, you know, when, when believers think that, uh, uh, and, and, and they, are, they are afraid of the enemy, something is wrong in that picture, because the enemy is the one that should be afraid of us. Uh, why? Because the greater one lives in us. Amen. The greater one, uh, Jesus, already defeated the devil. So he knows how to do it. We just need to lean on him and learn from him how to do it. You know, receive his guidance and his wisdom by the scriptures and by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So, um, what, what I'm going to try to do is, is talk about the battle um, and, um, and talk about the, um, the battle that we have as believers, you know, and, and we've been talking about this definitely uh, over the, the, the 11 weeks now <laughs> that we've been talking about this, uh, but how, how many of you know that this is a subject that is not to be just uh, study one time and that's it. If, if we are to fight, we need to know how to do it. And we need to, to deepen our knowledge on how to have our victory in Christ. Amen. So it is important for us to, to get deep into, into these things. Okay. So yeah, we're going to go to Ephesians chapter 6 to start with. Definitely, and uh, uh, verse 10, and, and we've been reading these things, and I have said some things already, but we will say uh, more things here. Um, I'm going to share it in the screen here, so you can see it, if I can get in the right network. Hold on a second. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. So in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10, um, it talks about how we are to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Amen. So it's definitely a, uh, a, a commandment from God. It's a commandment from God for us to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. It's not a suggestion. Amen. It's not a, uh, uh, like, if you feel like it, be strong in the Lord. Amen. If, if people are being nice to you, then be strong in the Lord. It's definitely a commandment of God to be strong in the Lord. Uh one of the things that I want to say here is that this word um, strong and uh, be strong is actually 
Um, the, the, the idea of something that is inner strength, uh, that is uh, something in your character, in your, uh, even in your moral um, strength, that is not just uh, uh, an idea of physically strong, but spiritually strong. Um, and and let's, let's read some of the dictionaries that uh, talk about this. In this dictionary, um, the, the complete word study Bible dictionary, it says that this word in, in the Greek is in dunamo. Is uh, is a um, found in biblical and ecclesiastical uh, literature only, and it, it meaning to make strong, vigorous, to strengthen. Used in the passive form, to be strengthened, to become strength. In connection, uh, for example, with Hebrews eleven thirty four, where it says that the the by faith. Uh, these heroes of faith, they quench the fury of the flames and escape the edge of the sword, and uh, whose weakness was turned to, turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign, foreign air armies. So, notice that they, even, they were weak, even though they were weak, they become strong by faith, right? So... We, we can say that, yeah, I, you know, when I'm tempted, I feel weak. But that weakness can become strength as you, as you lean into who's strong in you. As you have faith in the strong one in you. You know, Jesus is not weak. Amen. And since he's not weak, uh, uh, he, he never changes. You agree with that? Amen. How many of you agree that Jesus never changes? He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. But the, how many agree on this, that the Bible says that is not I who lives, but Jesus who lives in me. Amen. So if it's true that he never changes, which we, we, uh, we can testify to that. He is the same. He never changes. You know, people change, situations change, uh, you, know, uh, you know, conditions change, but Jesus never changed. The Word of God stays the same. Jesus is the same. And so, uh, He never changed, and also, He lives in you. So, the same strong Jesus that defeated the devil 2,000 years ago, not only in His life, he resisted temptation and he walked in righteousness. But in his death and resurrection, he defeated the devil completely. He is victorious. He knows how to defeat the devil. He never loses against the devil. Right? Now, you see how the devil attacked Jesus, right? He came with the word of God, but twisting it a little bit. Uh, uh, changing a little bit of the meaning. So, so the devil is smart enough to know that he cannot just use a flat out lie and for us to accept it. He has to use a little bit of the scripture and twist it a little. And that's true about false doctrines. That's true about false religions. They have used the, the word of God, but they have twisted it to where they have their own uh, human, carnal inter interpretation of yeah. things, you know. And so that, that's by basically what the devil did at the beginning when he tempted Adam and Eve. He said, oh, God said that, but he meant this, you know. So it's still, he's still the same. <laughs> you know, the devil doesn't have any new tricks. He does change, though. He is more defeated now than before <laughs> because there's more believers <laughs> that know how to use their victory against him. But Jesus never changes. And he is in you. And if you learn to follow him inside of you, you will have victory against the enemy. Amen. Yeah. So 
that word, uh, be, be strong in the Lord, uh, it, it talks about, uh, you know, uh, moral or inner strength. In, in several, uh, you know, references in the, in the, in the Bible. Uh, and, and let me read more of that dictionary here. Um, and, and that, uh, it says that in Hebrews 11.34 is a reference made about Samson and Hezekiah. Um, and, but it, which was uh, physical strength. But then in the moral sphere also, where is, uh, if, for example, in 1 Timothy 1.12 or 2 Timothy 4.17, it is use of the equipping with the power necessary to the office of an apostle. So you can be strong to do the office that you're called to. You know, you need strength to do your calling. You cannot just do it in your own strength. You know, uh, sometimes we, uh, you know, we have the tendency to rely too much on our own uh, intellect or way of thinking, but really we have to depend on the strength on the law of the Lord in our lives. Amen. Um, so, okay, so, um, in verse 11, it says, put on the full armor of God. And this, this, uh, uh, phrase, full armor, in the Greek, it comes from two words. Is the word panoplia, panoplia, and, uh, in the Greek, and, uh, the first word pan, uh, it means, uh, or pass, actually, in the, in the Greek, is uh, it, the first part of that word means all or every part or the whole thing. So Paul is going to describe the whole weaponry. But the other, uh, the other part is, is the word um, hopeless, hopeless, which is a... Um, a uh, a weapon or a instrument. So we're going to look at that. Uh, in in the scripture, we're going to be seeing that there is different weapons uh, today. We're going to see different weapons that are available to us, but we can we are commanded to use them all. Okay, and we have been talking about this, but I'm trying to recap and round the. Uh, the the series today and see if we can finish between uh, today and next and next time we talk about this. But the idea is that if you use the full armor of God or all the weapons that are available from God, and what we learned last week is that really is a revelation that the, the weapons are a revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. In different areas of your life. For example, the breastplate of righteousness is really a revelation of the righteousness of Jesus that has been given to you. Yeah. It's not your righteousness, nope. thank God, because our righteousness wouldn't uh, you know, amount to anything. But it's his righteousness. And it's his purity given to you. You know, in... in uh, in Romans 5, really is making a contrast between uh, uh, sin and righteousness. Like, you know, sin, because of sin, death came. Uh, but righteousness is a gift from God. Okay? And so, uh, so, this righteousness thing, what is this? What is righteousness? It's the opposite of sin. Just like uh, you know, when we were we weren't saved, our nature was to sin. Uh, our new nature in Christ is uh, the opposite. Not just not to sin, but to do the right thing. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes we just we we uh, just are content just to to not to sin, but that's not enough. We need to make a difference in this world. We need to be doing the right thing. Amen. 
So uh, I want to go uh, to talk about a little bit about righteousness, okay, today. Um, and um, we're going to go to uh, Romans chapter 6. And I guess we can start with verse 13. There's, there's more there in the whole chapter. But you understand that you are united with Christ um, by virtue of the new birth. By virtue of your salvation. But you're united to Christ in your spirit. Not in your mind, not in your flesh. That's true. Unfortunately, uh, you are not united to Christ in your flesh. Definitely, you, the flesh has a law in it that has uh, the desires that are opposite to, to righteousness. And so, in Romans 6.13, it says, Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. The interesting thing about this, um, and we, we're going to talk about more about this, but uh, this word instrument, again, is the word hoplon, and it's, it, it means instrument, of course, but it also means weapon. In fact, sometimes it's translated weapon. So you can translate this verse, offer your members as weapons of righteousness. Okay. So that, that fight that you fight has to include not only your spirit, but your body, your members, as instruments or weapons for righteousness. That means that uh, even though your body has a law that is against the will of God, you can still make your body obey righteousness. Amen? <laughs> you are in charge of your body and you're in charge of your mind. Nobody else is going to take charge of it. The Bible says you renew your mind. You take charge of your body uh, uh, and you present your body as a, a weapon of righteousness. The, and, and this is definitely uh, a militaristic uh, approach, and, and uh, it is talking about using our lives to destroy the works of the enemy. Amen. You know, using our lives to be a weapon for God. Really, I would like to say that the armor of God is what makes you a weapon for God. God is using his children as arrows to hit the tar target, to hit the mark, yes. to do his plan, to do his will. Amen? There are certain requirements. Yes, they, they, they are certain requirements. Uh, there are certain requirements. And in verse 14 says, For sin shall no longer be your master, because you are not under the law, but under grace. So what does that mean? Uh, it means that uh, thankfully because of Jesus' work on the cross, burial, and resurrection, we are not under the system that accused us as sinners but didn't give us any solution. <coughs> you know, that's what the law did. The law was the, like the x-ray. Have you ever broken a bone? You go to the hospital, right? Sister Betty knows this. Uh, you go to the hospital and they take an x-ray. <clears throat> and the question is, yeah, Sean broke his, his arm once too when he was little. Um, <clears throat> when you go to the hospital, they take an x-ray. And if that's all they do, you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, you are. Because, yes, the x-ray shows the problem, but it's not the solution. Shows the problem in more detail. 
shows the problem uh, more, uh, you know, realistically. But really, it doesn't give you any solution yet. So <clears throat> that was the law. The law would show that we are sinners. And um, it, it was really a set of um, commandments written in a piece of uh, stone. It was not inside man, but outside man. And wouldn't give life to man or change us. Just don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. And we did it, so we were guilty. We were sinners. So, but the only, the, the good thing about the law was... To show the problem more specifically, <clears throat> so we find a solution more specifically. The x-ray does show the problem more specifically, so the doctors know what more specifically do to fix the problem. So that was the good thing about the law. It did show more specifically our problem was not <clears throat> cultural or social or mental it was spiritual. And so the solution came. Jesus. And changed everything in the spirit. And when you receive Jesus. You are changing your spirit. Amen. Um, so now you're not under the law. But under grace. So what is grace? Grace. Is the power of God to be able to do what pleases Him. And I, and I have a verse for this before we continue. Um, and I have to find it in my notes. <laughs> but I believe it's 2 Timothy um, chapter 2, somewhere around there. Okay, That's, is that good enough? No, not good enough. Okay. Um, glory to God. Hmm. Let me see if I can find it. I believe it's Titus, actually. Chapter 2. Okay, look at this. Titus 2.11. Are you with me? Are you getting anything about the, from this? Uh, Titus 2.11, it says, For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvations to, salvation to all people. And it teaches us. So grace appears and gives salvation, but also teaches us. So grace teaches you. You, you need a teacher, you know. Yes. That's, that's a phrase from a movie, but you need a teacher. <laughs> the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit is your teacher. And uh, you need to be taught. I need to be taught. We all need to be taught. The Bible says that the anointing, anointing teaches us. Yes. Amen. The Holy Spirit teaches us. Jesus said the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. And that's called grace. But the grace of God teaches us to say no to ungodliness. And worldly passions. And to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives. In this present age. Amen. Amen. If you do this, you're winning the battle. If you do this, you're winning the battle. If you live a self-control, upright and godly life, and in this present age, and you say no to ungodliness and worldly passions. So it's possible by the grace of God to refuse to submit to the devil and to submit to God. Amen. It's, it's by the grace of God that we do it. 
It's by the power of God. And I keep saying the power, the grace is the power of God. Remember, be strong in the Lord means be strong in his power. So let's, 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 let's look at this idea a little bit more. Hallelujah. Let's go to Acts. Glory to God. I believe it's chapter 4. And I'll tell you it is uh, verse 33. And it's not in my notes, so follow me. It, in verse 33, Acts 4.33, it says, With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all. In this verse, the, the word power and grace are interchangeable. You can start the verse like this. With great grace, the apostles continue, apostles continue to testify the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God's power was so powerfully at work in them all. And it really doesn't change anything. Because the two words are interchangeable. Remember when Paul said, you know, take this uh, thorn in the flesh from me. Right? The famous thorn in the flesh. And Jesus, uh, and Jesus answered and said, my, my grace is sufficient because my power is perfected in your weakness. Amen. Right? So grace, my grace is sufficient. My power is perfected in your weakness. So... Basically, you recognize in your flesh, in your intellect, in your emotions, you, you don't produce the strength to, res, to, to win the battle, but you lean by faith in the power of God to win. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, always, if you, if you look at the Bible, the, the word grace and the word power are together and they're synonym, synonym and they're the same. Okay, it's the same. It's, grace is the power that teaches us, that, the power of God that teaches us to say no to ungodly, ungodliness and worldly passions and to live a self-control and godly, godly life in this age. That, that's, that's amazing, right? Let's go back to Titus. Because sometimes people think and, and teach uh, that... Um, the grace of God is like the mercy. Oh, it wasn't by the grace of God, uh, you know, that spared me. No, it, that's different. That's the mercy of God. The mercy of God, we need it, okay? Yeah. When we missed it, we need his, his, uh, his mercy, okay? But not to miss it so much, we have the grace not to miss it, but to do what he wants. Uh, 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 you know, in uh, verse 11 again, Titus 2.11. Are you with me? The grace of God has appeared. It, it means it is manifested, is present, is, is here. Thanks to the work of our Lord Jesus Christ. The grace of God is, is here. And, and, and what does it offer? It offers salvation to all people. Not just to a few, a few people or just to one group, but everybody. And verse 12 says that that grace teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live a self-control upright in godly lives. So really, the, the battle is to live this kind of life. That this is, this is when you're being used of God as his weapon to destroy the works of the enemy. Okay. Let me, let me read it in the King James. I, I love the King James as well. It says that um, in, in verse 11, For the grace of God uh, that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us. The, the grace of God is teaching us. Present tense. It's a continuous action. The, the grace of God is teaching you. The Holy Spirit is teaching you to do what? To deny ungodliness and worldly lusts. Amen. We should, and that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. 
Okay. So, uh, th that's amazing, right? Amen. Praise God. So, what we're saying is that the battle is learning to submit to God and to resist the devil. Amen. And it's in that order. You submit to God. We need to submit to God. Uh, what is to submit to God? It means to have an attitude that he is right, that I depend upon him, that his word is truth, and obeying him. That's, that's submitting to God. And the Holy Spirit will lead you. Uh, uh, and, and notice this in the, in the um, Net Bible, New English Translation Bible. Uh, verse 11, for the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all people. It trains us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age. It trains us. It's our, it's our coach. Amen. He's training us. You know, soldiers need training. You don't just show up to the battle and start shooting like you never practice even shooting. You're going to be dangerous even to your uh, fellow soldiers. No, no, no. You need training before you go into battle. And, and we need to be trained. That is what the grace of God does. Amen. So we're not under the law, but under grace. We're not under a system that accuses us and condemns us and shows us the problem even more specifically. But we're under a system that trains us, teaches us, enables us to live a righteous life, a godly life, a self-controlled life, an outright life, that is the system we're under. That's a good place to be. You agree? Yeah. Praise God. Let's go back to where we were in Romans. Because uh, I took a little detour here, okay? Romans 6.14. So, sin shall not longer be your master. Why? Because you're not under the law, but under grace. So now we understand a little bit more what does that means, right? It means that we are not under a system that brought, brings condemnation, but that doesn't give us any solution. But we're under a system that uh, gives us righteousness. That means the opposite of sinful uh, nature. And a system that trains us to do what God wants us to do. Okay. Amen. Now, we're going to see a little bit more about this in Romans 5. Uh, Romans 5. Still talking about grace as the power of God. Because in, in Ephesians it says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So part of that is the grace of God. And uh, in Romans chapter 5. Let's see, I, wanna, I guess I want to read since verse uh, 11. Yeah, I guess, uh, I'm sorry, verse 9. Verse 9. Romans 5, 9. Praise God. It says, since we have now been justified by his blood, or made righteous by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? Verse 10. For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Now, not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Verse 12. Therefore, just as sin entered the world, through one man, that was Adam, and death through sin. So what came into the world because, because of sin? Death. Death didn't come because God wanted you to die. 
It came because sin came in and opened the door to death. Man wouldn't die physically or spiritually, but firstly, it was a spiritual death. Because he said the day that you eat of this fruit, you will die. And not, almost 900 years passed, and he died physically. So he didn't die physically that day. What that, how did he die then? Spiritually. Spiritually, he died that day. And because of that, eventually he died physically. So Jesus fixed the spiritual death. He, he gives us life, spiritual life. Amen? So check this out. So it says that therefore just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin. And in this way death came to all people because of all sin. So it, it, it just came to all of us. Right? Verse 13. Be sure sin was in the world before the law uh, uh, was given. But sin is not charged against anyone's accounts where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned. What did death do? Reigned. From the time to, of Adam to the time of Moses. Uh, even over those who did not sin by breaking a command as did Adam. Who is a pattern of the one to come. Verse 15. But the gift... Is not like the trespass. For if the many die by the trespass of the one man. How much more did God grace. And the gift that came by the grace of the one man Jesus Christ. Overflow to the many. Verse 16. Nor can the gift of God be compared with the result of the man's sin. The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation. But the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. Verse 17, what I wanted to get to. For if by the trespass of one man death reigned through that one man, how much more, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life? Through the one man. So you can reign in life. Through the gift of righteousness. And the gift of grace. Right? That means. That doesn't mean that you can reign in my life. Or I can reign in your life. <laughs> but you can reign in your domain. If the devil is messing up with your finances. You can stop him. If the devil is messing up with your children. You can stop him. Because it's your domain. You have authority in your domain. Not in my domain. <laughs> Amen. You're not made to manipulate life, somebody else's life. But you can control what you, what you have authority over. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. And so, uh, again, righteousness is a gift. It says the gift of righteousness. It's like. Uh, uh, you know, if, if you're a, 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 a man, how, how or why are you a man? Because you were born that way, right? And so, same way, you were born into, uh, you know, into this new life. Righteous. It's not because you did something and you were declared righteous. Because you behaved right because how many of you know, it, it was all the other way around. We were sinners. Amen. But we were made righteous. Amen. It's a gift that came with salvation. That came with the grace of God. Okay. So uh, now let's go back to uh, Romans 6. And now finally I'm going to finish that, those verses there. Romans six fourteen. For sin shall no longer be your master. It used to be our master. Sin used to be our master. Unfortunately, we're trained. We were trained in our flesh, in our thoughts, to be slaves of sin. 
And when you're born again, that way of thinking doesn't change automatically. What changes your spirit, but not your way of thinking or, your, or the, habits, uh, the habits of your flesh. Those don't change automatically. You have to change. You're not a slave anymore. You know, as I, somebody says, well, why if the devil is defeated? It seems like the body of Christ experienced so much defeat. Or believers experience defeat in their lives. And I like to, to give this example. I, I read it in uh, Rick Renner's book, which is very good on, on this. Uh, Rick Renner. Uh, I'll give you the book later. But yeah, Rick Renner, Dress to Kill, is a very good book on this uh, subject. And, um, but anyway, he talks about this. A friend of his that had this uh, farm and had some goats. I believe it was goats, if I'm not wrong. And somebody stole the goat. You know, it happens, right? <laughs> and so uh, they thought, you know... Maybe an animal, you know, attacked the goats or whatever. They didn't know. And so somebody was riding their, their truck or something in the, in the, you know, in the country. And saw the goat on the side of the road, laying on the, on, on the side of the road. And called the guy and said, I see your goat here. And they came and, he was, and the goat was tied up. All four feet tied up. She was on the, on it, you know, it was on the, on the road, by the road, on the side of the road. And so, um, it, it had been there at least two or three days tied up. So, uh, so they, they found, oh, so okay, he wasn't, he wasn't hurt or anything. So they, they cut the ropes. And they're, the goat was still acting like, like she was tied up. She's been that way so long that she didn't think it was going to change ever. She was now trained to be tied up, even if she wasn't. <laughs> it's like the famous example of the elephant, right? They, they, when the elephant is a baby, they put the stake and they wrap him in the stake. And he cannot, when, when he's little, he cannot get out. But when he's big, he could just take that stake and go wherever he was. But he was trained since little to think that he couldn't move away from that stake. And he doesn't. Right? And so they had to slap this, this goat and put, her, put the goat up and move her legs a little. And finally she realized, oh, okay, I'm not tied up anymore. Mar Hankins tells the story of a friend of his that uh, has a, a, far, a chicken farm. And he, uh, he, you know, sells chickens to different farmers and stuff. And to transport the chicken, they tie the, their legs up to, to facilitate that they don't hurt themselves or whatever. And so when they, they deliver the chickens, they, they cut the ropes and the chicken are like that, like, they're still tied up. They don't move. And so they had to slap them a little and move them a little. And they finally, they, the chicken started like, oh, I'm not tied up anymore. <laughs> you know? And as believers, we have been trained by the, the mastery of sin for so long before we got saved. And, and the flesh still has the same desires that we think we still, we, if we don't renew our mind, we'll still think we're slaves. We're still tied up to sin. So it's, it's our job to, first of all, discover we're not tied anymore. We don't have the same master anymore. We were redeemed from that master. We're free. It's like somebody, uh, this book from, I, I think it's uh, Pastor Hagin, uh, Kenneth W. Hagin, I think it is. Uh, it's, 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 the title is, The Prison Door is Open. Why are you still doing inside? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> As believers, the prison door has been opened, but it's up to us to get out. Amen. God is not going to push us out. Sometimes I wish he would. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. 
But he doesn't. He tells us. You're not anymore in jail. You're not a prisoner anymore. You're not a slave anymore. Now start acting like somebody that is free. You're not a slave to sin. For sin shall no longer be your master. No longer. Because you are not under the law. The system that accuses you. And uh, show more specifically like an x-ray your problem. Your sinful problem. But you're under the grace. The system that enables you. That teaches you. That trains you. To live a godly life. A self-controlled life. Amen. An outright life. And that's the way to win. You win. You become a weapon for God. You become armed and dangerous for God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. So, in that, the next verse is amazing. It says, in the next verses, I mean, uh, what then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? You know, some people have it misinterpret grace. You know, they, they think grace means that you can sin and God just gives you a little pat on the back and says, oh, I understand. It's hard. It's hard. And you're okay. You're okay. No, that's not grace. That is, uh, what would you call that? That's ignorance going to seed. That is ignorance. No, that's not what, it, that, what grace means. Grace means you're able now to do what pleases God. You're enabled and being trained to even do more. To please Him even more. You know, it's like Jesus, He grew in, in grace and favor. You know, he, in other words, He was pleasing God more and more as He grew up. Because He had to start from scratch, just like you. When he became a man. Jesus wasn't pleasing God because he was 100% God and he didn't know. He was learned. He came to learn. Amen. So, uh, it says, what is the answer? By no means. You know, what then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? By no means. That's what it means, right? By no means. That's the answer. Don't you know when you, uh, that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey? Whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience or righteousness, which leads to righteousness. Uh, let me put it this way. You can obey sin... And you become more and more enslaved. But thank God you can start obeying righteousness. You say, but I, I've been obeying sin so long. It's so hard for me. We'll start obeying righteousness. Just do a little bit at a time. You will become more and more obedient to righteousness. Which is your new nature. And the grace will enable you to say no. To ungodly desires and, and, and fleshly lusts. And to uh, uh, live a, a self-controlled, godly, upright life in this world. In this world. <laughs> Some people say, oh, when I get to heaven, then I won't be sinning. That, 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 don't wait to get to heaven to start doing that. Do it now. You know. Uh, in verse 17, but thanks be to God that you, though used to be slaves to sin. You used to be, yeah, we used to be. We're not denying that, but we're not anymore. You have come to obey from your heart. So that's a key thing here, obey from your heart. You know how to obey from your heart, right? You're not doing it because you're going to impress somebody else, somebody else. You're not doing it because some people is watching you. You need to obey from your heart to God. You know, obey God. But it says here, you, you, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching. The pattern of teaching. Oh, thank you. 
I lost my my bubble over there. Let me put it back in there. Is it coming back? It is. There it is. It says in verse, uh, let's read verse 17 again. But thanks be to God. Thank, it's God, right? It's because of God. That you, though you used to be slaves to sin, but not anymore, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. And uh, let me say this. Um, we, uh, we were slaves to sin. I remember I was a slave to sin. And uh, before I got saved. Then I realized I, I was free. And then I started obeying a little more and a little more righteousness. And as you obey righteousness more and more, you become more acquainted with this pattern of teaching. But you obey from your heart. Do it from your heart. And, and you become more and more, you, become, you, you are being trained to uh, please God even more. To do, uh, uh, to do even more for His kingdom. And, and to do it in a better way, in a more specific way, in a stronger way, in a more effective way. Amen. As you obey from your heart. Uh, this is probably not the, my favorite translation of this. Let me see if I can find a different one. Let's see. Um, Let's see the net Bible here. But thanks be to God that though you were slaves to sin, you obey from the heart that pattern of teaching you were entrusted to. You were, en you were entrusted to. You were entrusted to the teaching. Uh, let me put it this way. Um, this is important what I'm going to say here. Like as Christians we think that the Christian life sometimes is like going to the supermarket. I buy uh, this product that I like and I put it in my cart. I, I, I don't like this product, so oh, too, much, too much healthy stuff and I don't put it here. And you know, we choose what we want. That's not the Christian life. It's the other way around. God is going in his shopping cart. We are on the shelves. And he's saying, oh, I want you to do this. Oh, I like this guy to do this other thing, to evangelize, to... Uh, I like this person to be a helper in church. You know, he is the one. We are given to him, not him to us in that sense, you know. In other words, uh, basically... Verse 18, and having been freed from sin, you became enslaved to righteousness. I thought I was free. I, I thought I wasn't a slave anymore. Yes, you are a slave now, but to righteousness. Yeah. Uh, let me put it this way. You're going to be a slave to something. Might as well be righteousness. Right. Oh, but I thought I was free, free, no slave anymore. No, <laughs> you're a servant. And, and to be honest, this, this is a good translation. A slave. A slave, you have been enslaved or you are a slave to God, to righteousness, to his. Uh, and what is righteousness again? Is that sinless, pure nature of Christ. The sinless and right Nature of Christ given to you by grace as a gift. Amen. So I believe that if we understand this, let me, let me put it this way. How many of you agree that sin has power? I mean, I, I experienced my life before I, I got saved, and, and sin has power. 
Even as believers, if we, if we submit to sin, we'll see it has power. And it will have consequences. Might as well not to, right? But if it's true that sin has power, how much more is true that the righteous nature of God giving us a gift to us has power as well. And even more power. Amen. And so as we obey from our heart this, this new nature, it's a new nature, but also it's, it's testifying this pattern of teaching. So as you obey the teaching, you are actually being trained to be more skillful, to be a better weapon for God. You need to be a better weapon for God. You know, uh, the Bible talks about, and I, I would have to look for the verses. I, I probably will find them uh, for next time we talk. But um, is, there's a psalm that says that uh, Israel became a deceitful uh, bow. You know, have you ever practiced bow no. shooting? No. But it, it, if, if, if a bow is not, uh, it's not right, you know, it's, it's, gonna, it's not going to work right. Uh, if, if it's not, uh, you know, aligned right or whatever, that the arrow is going to go somewhere else. Or if the, the cord is wore out or whatever, it's not going to work the same, you know. So basically, Israel was the bow and arrows of God, but it, it became deceitful. You know, they, they went away from the covenant. They really rejected Jesus and so they became like, they're not the, the weapon of God anymore. Only those that, uh, you know, are born again and are being trained to be this new arrow and this new bow for God, you know, in the new covenant. That's the new, the, the new weapons of God. And then the Bible says that he takes his children, that, that the man... Uh, the righteous man that uh, takes his uh, children from the, his, uh, where he has his arrows and sends them to do his will, right? You and I, we are arrows, we are weapons of God to do his will. Hallelujah. Let me say something here to, I'm going to be finishing with this. Um... That um, and 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 let me let me read verse 19 and and then I'll say what I was going to say. But verse 19 says, "I'm speaking in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh." So we're not saying your flesh is strong to be righteous. You recognize your flesh is weak. Yes, your flesh is weak, but you have a strength that comes from your spirit. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. What is sanctification? Is, is becoming holy or exclusive for God. You know, this is something that I, I like to do. <clears throat> Everything I use, like my my electronic devices, everything, it is sanctified to do things that are pleasing to God. Some people need to sanctify their phone and their computers. <clears throat> Amen? <coughs> because you're using it wrong. You should use your, your, your technology to get more sanctified, to obey righteousness, to investigate the Bible, to... Uh, listen to Christian books to <coughs> to see things that will uh, lead you into righteousness. Because that's what it what what happens when you obey righteousness. It leads to sanctification. <coughs> it's like the temple, the temple where God dwelled in the Old Testament. You know, the idea wasn't to let the temple be used by the Philistines to come and worship their gods. 
or some uh, worldly party, right? <laughs> or some indecent things like, you know, the, 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 the unbelievers would worship their idols with immorality and stuff like that. And so that was not allowed in the temple of God. Correct? Because the temple of God was holy or exclusive for the use of God. Not a mix of other things and God or just other things. No, just God. Amen? That's, that's to be holy. And, and God is holy because he only does his word. He only thinks his word. He only speaks his word. In fact, it's so much that God and his word are one. That, that's why he's holy. Jesus, when he prayed for the disciples, he said, sanctify them. Or make them holy in the truth, which is your word, right? And so, you now are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You cannot be a mix of things of the world. You can, you, you can but you shouldn't be a mix of the things of the world in your thought life, in your actions, in your words. Amen. Amen. You need to be holy. That's what, what uh, righteousness do when you obey and become a slave to righteousness. It leads you to be more and more and more holiness, uh, holy or sanctification. Uh, that's amazing. That means that the grace is doing it. That the coach is doing his job. Amen. He's training us to say no to ungodly desires. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Let me, let me finish with one idea that I have. Uh, and, and we'll be done with this. But Hebrews 4.12. Sometimes the enemy comes and you have to resist him. Uh... In close combat, most of the pieces of the armor are defensive, are to protect you. You know, the breastplate, the helmet. Uh, I, I'm going to talk about more about those next time we talk. But uh, there's one weapon that is offensive. It's to attack the sword of God, right? The sword. And in Ephesians it says that is the, the sword of the spirit. Okay. But in, in Hebrews 4.12, there's a description of that sword. It says the word, uh, the word of God is living and active and sharper than any double-edged sword, piercing even to the point of dividing soul from spirit and joints uh, from marrow. It is able to judge the desires and thoughts of the heart. So here the sword of God is not being... Um, explain as a weapon to attack the enemy as much as discern or separate what comes from the heart or from the flesh. Amen. So the, the word of God will teach you to discern or distinguish between what is flesh and what is spirit. Amen. Um. Praise God. Um, hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Um, I want to say something else here. And conclusion. Okay, this word two edge or double edge. Okay, um, that word is a Greek word, distomos, and it comes from two different words, but it means double edge or two edges, or, but also um, it means having a double mouth as a river or the use. Um, 
you know, the edge of the sword and other weapons has the meaning of two edge, but also double mouth. In fact, the two words that are, you know, the first word it means two, and the other one means either uh, edge or mouth. Is the word stoma, and uh, is the mouth basically is the word mouth? Can you see that in there? Um, uh, as if a gash in the face by implication language and its relations, figuratively an opening, especially the front or edge of a weapon, edge, face, mouth. So basically, that word in the, in the Greek language means double edge or double mouth. So it really it means this, that is the things that have double mouth. What has, what, how do you get that? Well, number one, the word of God was spoken by the mouth of God. But number two, your mouth has to speak it, so it has double mouth or double edge. You know what, this, this, this sword of, of a double edge that, that was used by the Roman soldiers, uh, it was a little curve at the tip, it was like 19 inches long. It was it is a sword called Machaira, and and this word, um, this sword, uh, would uh, be very effective in combat, close combat, uh, because uh, it would uh, penetrate it with the double edge. It would penetrate the enemy really fast, and since it was curved, only they had to twist it a little bit and take it out, and the other guy was done. Okay, it was very effective. So you need a double edge or double mouth sword in your life. Okay, and this, this double sword, double edge sword, or double mouth sword, is when God has spoken his word, it has the first edge. But when you speak the same word and obey the same word, it becomes the double edge. And it's very effective to resist the enemy, to put him on the flight, to put it, to make him flee from you, okay, is very effective. So there's, there's a word that God ha will give you by the Holy Spirit in a situation. You submit to that word, but you speak that word. You can only speak the word that you submit to. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It's, it's not like, oh, yeah, in Jesus' name I resist you, but I'm living in sin. Right? I, I cannot really resist him. I'm already a slave, enslaved to, to the enemy. But I need to start obeying righteousness and then speak righteousness to resist the enemy. You can use authority when you're under authority. When you're a slave to righteousness, you can use the weapons of righteousness. Amen. You know, sometimes we think we just resist the devil, but we can live whatever way we want to live. It's not going to work. Amen. You can have victory when you're actually being a slave to righteousness. You can speak the word of God because it's the double edge that will give you victory. And it's powerful. You know, Jesus... When Jesus was tempted, he spoke the word. You know, he not just resisted like, I'm not going to fall. I'm not going to fall in Jesus' name. I'm not going to fall in temp into temptation. That wasn't what Jesus was doing, right? He was living a righteous life. And that's why he could speak the word of righteousness. Amen. There is such thing as the teaching of righteousness in the Bible. And... I wanted to finish there, but let me, let me show you something here. Lord, help me finish here. But uh, Hebrews 5. Eleven. It says about this, we have much to say. I do have much to say as well. And it's hard to explain. 
since you have become dull of hearing. So the problem is not that so much that the word of God is hard to explain. It's when you become, when we become uh, dull of hearing, that it becomes hard to explain. You know, I have taught, you know, I, I, where I work, I have worked, uh, uh, I'm a computer guy. So one time they asked me to teach a computer class to children. And it became very hard to explain because they didn't want to hear anything. They wanted to play in the computers. It's not that computer is so hard. It's that people don't want to hear, you know. It's not that the word of God is so hard to explain. It's that when we don't want to hear it, it becomes hard to explain and to understand. Verse 12. For though by this time you ought to be teachers... You need someone to teach you again the basic principles of the oracles of God. You need milk and not solid food. It's talking about maturity, right? What you can eat as a baby is not the same as when you, you grow up. For everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness since he is a child. So there's a thing called the word of righteousness. And what is the word of righteousness? That we're righteous, made righteous. We have to submit to that to be able to speak with authority against the enemy. Amen. And have that double-edged sword. He will flee from you. He will flee from you. Submit to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are you equipped? today are you equipped to fight yes. you will become a weapon from God for God and, and from God to destroy the works of the devil the works of the enemy Jesus was sent to what to destroy the works of the evil one and in in Acts 10 38 it says that how Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit and power and he walked around and about healing all that were oppressed. He was doing good and healing all the ones that were oppressed by the devil. Amen. So he was destroying the works of the devil. One of the works of the devil is a sickness. Yes. You know, among other things, <laughs> he has some, several things that he does. But he wants to enslave people to sin. He's a manipulator. You know the word, the, the name devil uh, 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 means uh, somebody that, uh, the, the, that word devil is, is a Greek word that means uh, 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 something that is thrown against a membrane or a wall, like a rock or a hard metal ball against a, a barrier to break, to break it. But it's been thrown many, many times. So basically what the devil wants to, is to bombard you, your, your mind, your life, until you give in to what he's pressuring you to do. He's a manipulator. He's a mind manipulator. He wants to enslave you. He hates you. So this, the feeling has to be mutual. You have to hate him too. <laughs> and so uh, we need to, to really uh, learn to resist the devil and submit to God. Um, hallelujah. And with this uh, musical background, let me say that um, we need to... Uh, in verse 14, it says, uh, Solid food is for the mature, for those who have the powers of discernment, trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. Notice verse 14, solid food. Solid food is for the mature. And, and how are they mature? Because they have trained their discernment by con constant practice practice we need to practice righteousness practice righteousness and we become mature and we can discern 
things here. So you and I, we will be uh, uh, definitely uh, uh, more skillful as we obey more and more the word of God in this area. And to put it very plainly, if the word says you're righteous, start submitting to that. Start obeying that and become a slave to that. And you become more and more skillful in obeying God, in pleasing God, and destroying the works of the devil. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor Pam, come here. Thank you, Jesus. Powerful word this morning. Amen. How many of y'all were getting some revelation of the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus in you? That empowerment that we possess as believers to live a godly life. Amen. Well, I really feel in my heart that the Lord's drawing some people this morning. Whether you're watching online or you're here personally, he um, really impressed on my heart um, when I was in prayer and, and while Saul was uh, preaching, he's really um, going after some people on a rescue mission that maybe have been walking in sin or continuing in a sinful lifestyle and they know better. They've heard the word. They've heard um, the spirit of God has convicted them, has drawn them, and thank God for his mercy. Amen. Thanks God for his spirit that draws us. That, you know, unless he draws us, we can't come. Amen. So thank God for the convicting power of the Holy Spirit to draw us into that place where we are convicted of that lifestyle. Amen. But I wanted to read something to you. I felt like the Lord was wanting me to read. And um, it is to, to give a call to also give a warning, to give a heed, to give a caution, just like Jesus did. Do you remember the story where Jesus went and healed the crippled man that was there by the pool? He, the pool of Bethesda, he was there, and the angel would come and stir the water, and whoever got into the water first was healed. That man was laying there. He was a crippled man for 38 years, the Bible says, and Jesus healed him. But then later, after Jesus heals him, he comes, he runs into him again. Let's see what he says. Amen. And it's in John 5, 14. And he says, later, this is after Jesus healed the man that had been crippled. He said, later, Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, see, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jewish leaders that it was Jesus who had made him well. Now, we know that not all sickness um, is caused by somebody being in sin. Just because someone is sick doesn't mean they have committed a sin. But in this man's uh, case, the sin was the open door for the sickness, right? Right? And Jesus is warning this man. And he's saying, all right, good, you're in church. You're in the temple now. And you're well, but I want to keep you well. Let's keep that door shut to sickness. Amen? Because if you don't stop sinning, is what he told the man. If you don't stop sinning, something worse than being crippled is going to come upon you. So how many of you know that was a heed, a warning? That was instruction from Jesus on how that man could keep his healing. You know, there's some people that get healed, miraculously healed. How many of you would agree if you've been crippled for 38 years and you get up and you can walk? That is a miraculous, that's a miraculous demonstration of God's power. Now, he said you've been touched by the miraculous, 
but let's keep you walking in the miraculous. And that's what Pastor Saul was teaching us this morning. How many of you know you've been touched by the miraculous? That was a miracle that you've been made righteous, that you've been made brand new on the inside of you. Now Jesus is showing up and going, let's stay, keep walking in the miraculous. Keep walking in that newness of life. Put on that newness of life. Put on that mind of Christ. Amen. That what I was feeling in my heart this morning, that Jesus is saying the same thing to some people sitting right in church. Stop sinning or something worse could come upon you. How many of you know that's the mercy of God when he gives you a word like that? Stop what you're doing. How many of you know when you run a stop sign in the natural, when you violate your conscience, you're running a spiritual stop sign? That is the, that is the, uh, the caution of the Lord going, stop, don't do that. Don't do that. And how many of you know in a car, if you just go right through that stop sign, you're going to end up getting in a crash? Amen? How many of y'all are grateful that we've got the Holy Spirit on the inside of us to go, stop, stop doing that. Don't say that. Don't go there anymore. Don't watch that. Don't do that. Amen? Like Saul was saying, the, the law was on the outside of man in the Old Testament. But now we have his laws written upon our heart. Amen? He lives on the inside of us. So I just want to give that call this morning and that heed. I feel it so strong this morning. God is telling some people, just like he told that man, stop stop sinning or something worse can come upon you. Amen. The Bible says don't give place to the devil. We got to keep the door shut to the devil. Amen. And when we're hanging on to sin and we're continuing in sin when we know better, we got the door wide open to the devil. You can't blame it on God if you get in a wreck. I'm talking about spiritually. Amen? And the Bible warns us about that, even teachers of the Word. If you don't obey your conscience, then you can end up shipwrecked. You know? Here you are preaching to people, and you yourself can be spiritually shipwrecked. Amen? Thank God for the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen? But we're not going to abuse it. We're going to use it. Amen? Hallelujah. You've been given some eye-opening revelation this, this morning that can cause you to be a mighty weapon in the hands of God. Amen. Aren't you grateful that you're no longer a slave to sin? Hallelujah. You're no longer a slave. Hallelujah. The devil don't like messages like this because it gets people free. It, they see, hey, I'm not a slave to you anymore. I'm not a slave to drugs anymore. I'm not a slave to alcohol. I'm not a slave to gossiping. I'm not a slave to that anymore. I've been made righteous. I've been made free. I've been made in right standing with God. Perfect as if I'd never sinned. Amen? Hallelujah. So if that is you... And you feel that that word is for you this morning. Maybe you have continued in a lifestyle of sin. And I, I felt so strong when I was in prayer that it is somebody that God has convicted you. He has gone after you and you've ignored him and you have not repented. Well, I'm here to tell you right now, you're getting into a danger zone. If you turn him around, if you keep turning him away, Amen. But Jesus in his love and in his mercy for that man that was saved from being crippled said, stop sinning. Aren't you glad that he don't just tell us to stop sinning, but he gives us the empowerment, the grace of God to walk in a lifestyle free from sin. Amen. So Lord, I just pray right now, 
Lord, that we would all examine our hearts. I do believe you're on a rescue mission this morning. Whoever that person is, Lord, that you have gone after or even miraculously healed, Lord. I do feel even somebody that maybe has been healed and something worse has now come upon you. I believe if you will uh, repent and turn from that sin, come out of that lifestyle of sin, in, turn away from that sin that it will even unlock and release healing into your body in the name of Jesus because the door will be shut to the enemy. And Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word this morning, Lord, that opened our eyes, Lord. Thank you for the revelation, Lord, that came, that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, that we can walk, Lord, in that newness of life, Lord. And I thank you for your forgiveness. <laughs> thank you for your mercy. Hallelujah. Amen. It's just that simple. All you have to do is pray and repent and turn from it and go in the other direction. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have never accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and um, He is calling you this morning too, calling you that if you will confess with your mouth by believing in your heart that He is the Lord Jesus, that He died and rose again, the Bible said that you shall be saved. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for this word. I needed this word this morning. How about you? Amen. I needed this word. What a powerful word. It would be good to go and listen to it again. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Well, aren't you grateful for the mercy and love of God and the grace of God? Aren't you glad that he chased you down? <laughs> Amen. Even when you tried to go in the wrong direction, no, he called you back. He goes after that one that's lost. Amen. Even when you've lost your way, he goes after you. So we thank you um, for coming this morning. We're going to take up our tithes and offerings this morning. And we thank God for even the grace of God, the ability, even in our giving, the empowerment, even when he tells us to go beyond the tithe and bless somebody. Amen. He is able to make all grace abound to you. He can do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can ask or think or imagine. Amen? So uh, we're going to take up our tithes and offerings. And we thank you, Lord, for the empowerment, the grace to give. And to trust in you, Lord, to trust, just like we're to rely on your strength to walk out, walk in that newness of life. We rely on you even in the area of our finances. Amen. We put our trust and our hope in you, knowing that you are our source and that you are our provider in the name of Jesus. Well, uh, Brother Ronnie, you want to come out and pray over the offering this morning, and then we're going to um, take up the offering. Father, what a word today, Lord Jesus, that we can keep the armor on, Father God, that we're armed and dangerous, Father God, and the devil's scared of us, Lord Jesus, because we walk in your light, Father God. Now, Lord, we ask that you bless this offering and, and bless the giving and the giver, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Well, don't forget we have Wednesday night service at 7, prayer at 6. If you want to come join us an hour before every service, we have prayer. Thursday, we have prayer at 12.30. If you're not working, you're free that time. And um, we, we are looking forward to what God is, is doing and what he's going to do in this place. Amen? And in our nation as well. So we just pray that everyone in here has a super blessed week. Amen? Thank you guys so much for coming out and having such um, hearts to receive, hungry hearts. You know, it, it makes a difference when you have hungry people in the building. <laughs> it makes a difference. It pulls on, the, on that gift and that revelation that's able to flow out of pastor and different ones that are sharing. Amen. So we just uh, bless. Yep. We had went out last week, last Saturday, and, and 
did the Great Commission and spreading God's word and everything. Had a wonderful time. Got to share the gospel with people here and there. So we're planning going out June the 4th on a Saturday. It's so hot and it's getting hotter. But we're going to try to do it from 5 to 7. And we'll announce the next couple of weeks where it's going to be. But we're just praying and, and asking the Holy Spirit to lead us to where we go and spread the gospel. And uh, we got a, a little system like we was talking this morning, and, and the Word of God was talking about a system, you know, that we stay in God's flow and stay in His system. But to go out and, and tell people, hey, Jesus loves you. And, you know, just to show that love, and then when the Holy Spirit gives us reverence and teaches us, you know, we let Him do it, you know, because it's by faith. But we're going to let y'all know exactly where it's going to be in the next couple of weeks and everything and uh be praying for us and if you're able to come out and and share the gospel hey god will just bless you and bless you and bless you for it so you know we want to thank jesus for it amen yep Okay. We sure will. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank God for His power. It, it's our life, our life source. That's right. <laughs> Amen. 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 Well, praise God. Uh, if there's anybody here that also needs healing in their body, uh, we would like to pray for you. Uh, maybe someone that's here that has not yet received their prayer language with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Uh, we would like to lay hands on you too and, and pray for you for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So um, we're going to end here by uh, laying hands on those that have uh, maybe ailments in their body or want the infilling of the Holy Ghost. And um, we just ask for, um, I guess Ronnie's going to help um, Betty. Okay. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Yes. Command healing digestive system to be completely restored to normal hallelujah thank you jesus yes father yes thank you thank you yes 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Alan, you guys, uh, do you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, or, or is it here? Okay. 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 Yes. So, so you guys... Uh, have you ever spoken in tongues with the uh, uh, at the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Okay, I'm going to give you a, a few instructions really quick. It's really easy. And the Holy Spirit will nev never force you to do anything that you don't want to do. You cooperate with Him. 
The devil is the one that pushes people to do things that they don't want to do. But God is uh, very gentle. He is a gentleman. And he will wait for us to cooperate with him. Okay? And so, first thing I want to show you really quick in Acts chapter 2. On the day of Pentecost. It says that they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And, and began... Who began to speak in other tongues? The Holy Spirit or they? They. They began to speak. In. So, in other words, the Holy Spirit didn't grab their tongue to make, force them to speak in tongues. Or they didn't lose control of themselves and spoke in... No. They began to speak in other tongues. In other words, they sensed the presence of the Holy Spirit because it came up upon all of them with... Even with uh, evidence of, uh, of uh, tongues of fire on top of them. So they knew the Holy Spirit. And, and he came as a strong and rushing wind. So definitely the Holy Spirit was there. But they, when they recognized that, they, they saw that the way to cooperate with the Holy Spirit is that they would begin to speak in different languages. So it's not up to the Holy Spirit to make us speak it's, it's like when Jesus told Peter to get out of the boat, or, Jesus, or Peter said, if it's you, command me to come to you walking on the water. So Jesus said, come. Jesus gave the commandment, but Peter was the one that got out of the boat and started walking. He wasn't forced by Jesus. It was, he obeyed Jesus, in other words. And so it was impossible to walk on the water? Yes, it is. But by the commandment of Jesus, he was able to do it. And as, as much as he was trusting in Jesus, he was able to walk on the water. When he got in fear, he sunk and everything. But they came back walking. It doesn't say that Jesus carried him back to the boat. They both walked back to the boat. And so the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit... Is also an action of faith on our part. It's like that walking on the water. You, there's not a commandment for everybody to walk on the water, but there is a commandment for everyone to be filled with the Spirit. And so we obey that commandment and cooperate with the Holy Spirit. And, and really quickly here in, in Luke 11, uh, I want you to see this. And verse, I guess verse 11. What father among you, if it, his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good things, or good gifts to your children, how much more uh, uh, will the heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So, you know, in, in uh, other uh, verses says, if, if um, it, the, the child asks for bread, he will not give him a stone. And then he says, if it asks for fish, don't give him a serpent or for an egg, he won't give him a scorpion. And in, in the chapter right before this in Luke chapter 10, he said, I'll gi I have given you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over every uh, force of the enemy, and, and you will, uh, it, will, it won't harm you. So just a chapter before, he, he equated, uh, he said that serpents and scorpions were forces of the enemy. So he's saying here, if you ask your heavenly father for the he Holy Spirit, he will not give you serpents and scorpions. In other words, he won't give you anything from the enemy. So the guarantee that, that you will receive the Holy Spirit is that you are children of God. And you're asking your heavenly father, the Holy Spirit, he'll not, he's not going to give you anything from the enemy. Okay? And secondly, uh, you know, if you ask for bread, he won't give you a, a, a stone means that, you know, stone is something from the, the, the earth, from the ground. Uh, and, and this body, was the flesh, was made out of the ground, so out of the dust. So basically he's saying, uh, if you ask me for bread, I'm not going to give you something from the flesh. 
Because the first thought that the enemy meant, uh, uh, brings sometimes when people start speaking in tongues is, you're making this up on your own. It's your own flesh making this up. But if you ask your heavenly father, he's not going to give you something from your own flesh. He'll give you the Holy Spirit. Okay? And I believe as you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you will also be healed. Because the same spirit that fills you also heals you. So we're going to believe for both the baptism of the Holy Spirit and for a complete healing. So it says that he will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. How much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So we're going to ask to, uh, to our Heavenly Father and we're going to receive. Those yes. you ask, you receive. <laughs> Amen. You believe, you receive. That's, that's faith, right? When you pray, you believe, you receive, and you have it, right? So pray this with me. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I'm your child. You have purchased me with your blood. You cleanse me. The Lord Jesus is my Lord. I believe with all my heart that he's alive because you resurrected him and I serve him that's why I know that I'm your child and as a child I ask you for the Holy Spirit right now I believe I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in different languages different to English or any language that I know thank you father I receive it now in Jesus name now lift your hands right now and begin to give expression in a different language by faith no more in English you know I can speak in English and in tongues, but I have to stop the English to start speaking in tongues. So you stop the English and start speaking in tongues. You speak by the Spirit. There you go. Or by faith. You let your voice come out. Make syllables and words. They began to speak in different language. It's an action of faith. Remember, He will not force you. There you go. Those little syllables and words that are inside of you. And I know it's hard to lose control of what you say because your mind is used to control what you say. But it's like disconnecting your tongue from your mind and connecting it to your spirit. Finally, you're going to be able to speak, to speak from your spirit instead of from your mind. Oh, he enables you to do that. Come, begin to move your mouth. Begin to let your voice come out by faith. This is a, an a, a, a action of faith. There you go. Little syllables, little words. You're cooperating with the Holy Spirit. Don't worry about anything. A little bit more. Give it expression by faith. Be, be brave. Be brave. Say this with me. I submit my mind to your Holy Spirit. I submit my tongue to the Holy Spirit. And now I will speak by faith a new language that I don't know. Now come begin to do it. There's some words inside of you then you express. He will not force you. It's something that you willingly do. Until you open your mouth, you, the, the language will not come. There you go. Braver, braver. No. You don't have to hear them. It's an act of faith. 
Yes. Also, also you don't have to um, like imitate uh, the, the what somebody else is speaking. The Holy Spirit will give you your own language. Yes. It's, it's coming from the inside, not from the outside. So that's the change because you're used to control everything you say with your mind. And so it's, it's, it's a very strong change when we don't control what we say yeah. with our mind, but yeah. with, with our spirit. We do control it, but with our spirit. Yeah. And so it, it, it is a step of faith yeah. to enter yeah. into that uh, yeah. realm of the spirit and let our tongue <coughs> uh, start speaking fluently. Amen. <coughs> so uh, I, I, I can speak... Um, Spanish as well, and uh, but I cannot speak English and Spanish at the same time. I have to stop the Spanish and start the English, and vice versa. But it's an action of faith. Uh, one time I ministered to a man that was uh, mute because he was deaf, so I had him uh, put his hand on my throat and he could perceive the vibration of my words, and he started speaking in tongues, even though he was mute. He never sp uh, learned to speak in, in the regular language he was able to speak, but he understood it was an action of faith. He had a lot more excuses than uh, we do because he was deaf, but he started flowing in this. And so uh, you need to start uh, forming words by faith. It's like when you obey, when you got saved, you open your mouth to say, Jesus, you're my Lord. And I receive and I believe that you're resurrected from the dead. Uh, so same way, you do an action, action of faith where you open your mouth, let words come out, and uh, vibrate your, your voice, you know, from your throat, start making syllables with your tongue. On triclando, corre, doctor. There you go. Corrobatikilarabos. Corrobatikilarabos. Yes, from your spirit. How do we know it's from your spirit? Because we ask our Father. That's right. Yeah. We we're not doing it because somebody else said it. It's because God said it. There you go. Form those little words. It's, it's a little process but you're doing it godian dronki kechan langra brondikiria chlorambosiria ondriki andokro praise god it's like coming out of the boat into the water it's a little action of faith that's right You know, the man that was paralyzed uh, for 38 years and Jesus told him, get up and walk. He could have said, you know, I, I've been 38 years I, I can't, uh, here in this stretcher, so I cannot do it. Instead of that, he started moving. Jesus didn't move him. He moved himself. Yeah. Same thing with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You start moving your tongue. Yeah. You start letting your voice come out. By faith, just like that Amen. crippled man, stopped being crippled right then because he yes. obeyed God. Yes. And the power of God connected with yes. him when he obeyed God. Yes. Same thing now, as you obey God, you become powerful to speak yes. in this new language. Yes. Glory to yes. God. Yes. Glory you. to God. And you, can, yeah. you can pray in tongues? Yes. No, the Bible says we can pray. We can pray. Back and forth. Yes. Sometimes when we're spending praying in the mm -hmm. Spirit, He'll be interpretation of what we're praying. The Bible says when we're praying in the Spirit, praying in perfect will, according 
perfect will of God. Amen. Sorry. So uh, let's streaming. pray for the healing yes. in his body. Let me say yeah. something else about the speaking in tongues. Uh, um, the presence of God came upon Jesus when he was baptized by John the Baptist. And, and John the Baptist said it came upon him like a bird, like a dove, in a tangible bodily form, it says in one of the Gospels. So it, it is more tangible. It's like the Shekinah glory is very tangible. You know, it was, it, it, they couldn't enter the temple in the Old Testament because they bounced back, basically, because it was so thick, the, the atmosphere inside the temple. And so uh, it's a more tangible. The same Holy Spirit that you received when you got saved is not another Holy Spirit, but it's a, a, a greater measure of the same Holy Spirit. Jesus was uh, conceived by the Holy Spirit, so he was already the temple of the Holy Spirit. But they, they came a, a greater measure, a more tangible presence of God, which is what you just experienced now. But it's up to us to yield to it. He won't force us. So you yield a little bit, but you will learn to do more. It's a good training. When we're talking about the grace of God trains us to yield yes. to him more and more. So uh, the more you speak in tongues, actually you're training more to yield to Him. Because yeah. you're, you're yielding your tongue. The Bible says that if you control your tongue, you, it's like the rudder that guides your whole life, really. Yeah. Like the boat is, is, is led by the, the, the wheel, right? So it's the same thing as you yield your tongue to the Holy Spirit, really you're letting, uh, let me say this. Your problem, my problem, is that we don't know everything. We don't know everything. I don't know everything. But the Holy Spirit does. How can I pray the complete and perfect will of God with my mind? I couldn't because I don't know everything. I would have to depend upon something that the Holy Spirit is doing without the interference of my mind to be able to pray the perfect will of God. And that's what praying in the Spirit is. It's praying from your spirit, your human born-again spirit, united with the Spirit. They're, they're one Right? Uh, he who joins the Lord is one in spirit with him. From where you're one with the spirit, you're praying to God his perfect will. So that kind of prayer is powerful. Right? So the more you pray in the spirit, the more you're praying the will of God. The more you're yielding yourself to him, the more you're training yourself to yield to him. And, and in that same token, uh, it, it is the power, the same power of God that will heal you right now. And, and uh, uh, the Bible says that believers shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So we're going to do that by faith. And also you can pray a little bit more in tongues as we pray for your healing. Just to tell you that you can start whenever you want and to stop whenever you want. You can pray out loud or you can pray just as a whisper. Right? You can go home and pray. Uh, put a... Uh, uh, worship music really loud and pray really loud in tongues or you can just be praying under your driving. breath while you're working. driving or working <laughs> you know so you can that's why that's you know because how many of you know that when you try to pray you run out of what to pray but when you pray in the spirit you don't run out yes. and the Bible says pray always without ceasing right so how can you do it by praying in the spirit right yeah. Okay, so we're going to pray for your healing. Amen? Hallelujah. So, thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You are the healer. We are not the healers. But you are the healer, That's Jesus. Right. Right. You haven't changed. You have not changed, Jesus. You're still the healers. You healed people 2,000 years ago, and you still heal today. So we, we receive this healing. Say this, I receive my healing. Say this, I receive my healing. And, and power to speak in this new language. More and more. Thank you for your presence. Your healing presence. Your healing power. Your healing work. Lord, I ask for revelation of your healing work. And revelation, how to cooperate with your healing power. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for touching these yes. points, Father, yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. Thank you. 
for every joint in the name of Jesus. Loose. That's right. Being and loose strengthened. And strengthened and oiled in the name of Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We uh, come against any stiffness, any arthritis that may be trying to sit yes. in. And we command Arthur to pack his bags and get out in the name of Jesus. Yes. We thank you for touching him from yes. the top of his head right now. Go, Shalei. To the soles of his feet, yes. Father, just a major overhaul in yes. the blood, everything, joints, everything, yes, Father, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank yes, you, Father. Father. Just like that oil pouring, pouring on his head right now, yes, going Father. to every area of his body, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank, thank you, Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, thank you. for being I, I want you to start, yes, yeah, to remember. start moving, yeah. moving those, what, what was it that was yeah. bothering you, your knees, your, your... Yeah, let's let's move those knees a little bit by faith. You know, Jesus sometimes have people do things to release their faith. Sometimes we have to do something to release our faith. Yes. Just like when we speak in tongues, we have to move our mouth to release our faith <laughs> and let our voice come out. Yes. Amen. Yes, thank you. Is there anything specific? Um. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna commend that to shrink in Jesus name, in yeah. Jesus name. Thank you, Thank you Father. Right Thank you, Lord. Yes. In Jesus name. Thank you for your power. In Jesus name. From the Kita Vendo, from the Randishi Kara, from the Rando Rashela, Yando Kondiri Ramos. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you that your hand is upon him, Lord. Yes. 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 It's on his life. Thank you for a report from the doctors. <laughs> they will confirm for confirm this in Jesus' name. But we believe that you are the healer. Yes. Yes, Lord. No fear. The name of Jesus. Yes, no we don't submit Thank to fear. We used to be yes. slaves of fear, and we're not slaves of yes. fear anymore. Amen. We God walk in faith. Yes. Hallelujah. So, so your back is okay, or you have any troubles with your back? Oh, right now, it's hurting. Okay. Okay. All right. Correndara I command every bone, every muscle in his back. To be corrected in yeah. Jesus' name. Oh, Korabasila Rara. Korabashila Rara. Koradara Yara Basorur. Olarada Yara Basorur. Mm, yes, every. The legs and the arms I command to be. Koraboshidi. Uh, be equal in their. Koraboshidi. Locate themselves in the right position. Every vertebrae, in Jesus' name, I command it to be located in the right position. In Jesus' name, every nerve that is pinched, we command it to be unpinched. In Jesus' name, I want you to move your arms and check your back right now. You see a difference already? A little bit? That's good. When, when he starts something, he finishes it. He doesn't leave things halfway done. So he's, he, you see a little difference already because he started already, but he wants to, that was just, he gives you a little bit for you to release your faith and start saying, I am healed and, and, and make that power to work continuously. And, and, and there's, oh, of course, there's occasions when he heals completely, immediately the person, but sometimes, you know what happens is that the person doesn't develop his faith to keep their healing. So uh, sometimes I'd rather, uh, when, when it's a progressive healing, because you start exercising your faith to, to grow in that healing, and, and you know how to fight. Because the, the enemy will try to bring the symptoms again and the pain, yeah. but you can resist them. By, by your mouth, the double-edged sword, by his stripes I was healed. I submit to your healing power, 
So I can resist the enemy in this area. So you believe by, uh, by, in your heart. He, he healed you. Like the Bible says that uh, by his stripes we were healed. It, it doesn't say he will heal you. It says we were. It's past tense. It's a done deal. It's up to us to appropriate that, to make it ours in, in, in our lives by faith. So the more we speak it, the more we submit to it, the more we believe it, the more that power will manifest in our lives. And, and he wants you to learn to fight that good fight of faith, right? Yeah. To keep your, to, to retain your healing. He, said, he doesn't only want you to, not only want you to receive the healing, but to retain it. Because so many people receive their healing and then they lose it. They don't know how to retain it. The same, with the same faith you receive it, you have to retain it. With faith. Amen. So, and we, we, we pray for you. Perfect. I need a heart. Well, it's I or something. Yes. And also, you, you were filled with the Spirit. I want you to lay hands on your wife, too. Yes. Yes. And it's prayer in Jesus' name. Any formation in her bones, in her foot, in Jesus' name. Yes. Yes, thank you. You're the healer. Jesus, you're the healer. Jesus, you're the healer. We honor you as the healer. You're, you're still doing the same thing you did when you were here on earth, healing all the sick. He healed all the sick. All that came to him in faith. He healed all that came to him in faith. We release our faith in Jesus' name, our confidence, our trust in you. And Any nerves that are pinched in riches in Jesus' name, I command it to be unpinched. Yes. Yes. Lorenzo, I'm going to ask you to sit a little bit here in this chair. I need you to, I, I feel like I need, put your back completely against the back of the chair. I'm going to check the, the distance of your legs to see if they're equal. Can I lift them up? Would that be okay? Okay, I'm pressing them towards you. Okay. Ozella. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm measuring his legs here. One, one is a little, I'm pressing towards him. And this one is shorter than this one. You see that? Okay, in Jesus' name, I command. I command for the, the bones and the muscles be equal in Jesus' name. Look at this, Ocel. Yes. Do you see that? I'm still pressing towards him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, come on. We're going to walk a little bit. You see a difference now? Come on, let's walk a little bit. Hallelujah. And you're back too, right? Yes, that's right. That's right. That's right. A walk of faith. I should have asked your, your uh, daughters to see this. But you saw it, right? <coughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
You guys had a good a good class. I, I see you get a lot of uh, prizes. Good. Oh, your granddaughter? Okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Yes. Thank you. We're praying for Miss Betty here. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 All right. Following you. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God, hallelujah, praise God, praise God. Well, this is good, amen? <laughs> the power of God. Yes, praise God, the power of God is here. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good and his mercy endures forever. Amen. Yes. So uh, we we might dismiss, dismiss now unless you want to stay another four hours or something. Uh, we used to have this youth group. We were youth pastors in, in South America and Colombia. And we have to literally force the, the kids to go. They wanted to keep worshiping and and it was, you know, it, it was a, a big city, so it was public transportation, and it, it only goes uh, to certain hours, so they needed to go. <laughs> it's not that they, we wanted them to, to leave or anything, but they needed to go home. And so we had to basically make him stop and go home. <laughs> but they wanted to keep worshiping God, amen? That, that's people with hunger, amen? Here. Yeah, Come on. I just, I have to follow the spirit. I yeah. wanted to share this. I had went to the doctor and I had my finger cut and everything. And I went three different times. I, I had busted it open at work and got like eight stitches, right? So when I got there, they checked. So I asked the doctor, I said, what's my blood pressure? You know? So the doctor told me the blood pressure. It was, it was a good report, my blood pressure, you know? And I went the second time, and it was also a good report, my blood pressure. Well, and then I went the third time, and that's when they checked me out. And this is for y'all, right from Jesus wanted me to share this with y'all. That when they checked it the third time, my blood pressure was 120 over 60. So I asked the nurse, well, why is it so good, my blood pressure? And she said, well, and it's the peace of God that passes all understanding. So that peace that God has placed in y'all's hearts, right? Is, I don't know if your blood pressure is high, if it ain't this or that. But I, I started professing this in Jesus' name. The pastors give us a book that we would, we would read this book and it, we would profess it. Lord, my blood pressure is 120 over 80. 120 over 80. And then when I went the third time after I had this thing on my finger and, the, and it was 120 over 60, the lady said, that was excellent. And I said, wow, I never thought my blood pressure would be like that. Well, in Jesus' name... <laughs> Y'all profess your blood pressure to be good in 120 over 80. And then, just like he did for me, next thing you know, it may be 120 over 60, which is excellent. So, yeah. <laughs> so praise God. I just wanted to share that with you and everything like Amen. that. Amen. So, you know, so. Well, you know, Pastor, I had similar experience. Praise God. The doctor had me on my blood pressure and for about five years. Praise God. And Praise God. Oh, wow. So Praise God. You, need, you did not uh, need any more um, blood pressure medicine anymore. <laughs> Praise God. Awesome. Um, so, yes, we, we need to praise God. 
And so um, that's awesome, amen. Uh, and uh, yes, that, that book is uh, what, The Creative Power of God? The Creative Power of God. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll get you that book too. It's, it's a really good book. That's an excellent blood pressure, right? <laughs> amen. Okay, before he had a little bit of high blood pressure. It was it was uh, tending to be a little high. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. That's amazing. All right, so. We, we're so glad to have you here today, and uh, we want you to go home and, and, and enjoy your family, be, be kind to each other, and, and let the love of Jesus uh, fill your hearts. Amen? Okay, we bless you in Jesus. Let me just bless you. Father, I bless this congregation and uh, even people that are watching online. I command a blessing upon blessing and transformation by the Holy Spirit in their lives and revelation of the Holy Spirit of the person of Jesus Christ in their lives, the, the work of Jesus Christ and the power of Jesus Christ in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Bless you.